This episode of Huchos is brought to you by Blue Eddy. Welcome back to Huchos. Today on Huchos, we're setting up a full off-grid indoor hydroponic system with grow lights, and we're going to try and grow plants only utilizing power generated from the sun. Now, in the theme of most of my videos lately, we're going to run into a plethora of issues and I'm going to show you how to overcome them. First of all, the hydroponic system that I'll be using for this grow is our indoor shelved NFT hydroponic system, which I've already covered in a previous video. There is a PVC pipe with reservoir underneath. I will actually be doing some changes to this system within this video to make it easier to manage, but the system worked fantastically the first time. So I want to implement it again with some modifications to make it more power efficient. And I will be using the Blue Eddy AC300 and B300 home battery backup, which was supplied to me by Blue Eddy to make this video. What we're going to do today is we're going to amend this unit so that the unit is able to be emptied easily uh, the reservoir is able to be changed over and so that it looks nicer. The way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to be using a larger shelving unit. I'm also interested to see if we can run it purely off solar power. Now, I'm gonna run through this pretty quickly because I've already done a whole video on how to set up this system. The only difference here is the reservoir will be slightly different and the shelving will be slightly different. Now, I love this painting, so I'm actually going to move it for the duration of the grow uh, so that I don't damage it with leaves. Because this is in my house, I've gone with the nicest looking tub I can get. This is a 70 liter food grade handy storage tub. I'm just gonna be cutting the lid so that it will accept the piping. This will just allow me to slide it in and out. This is gonna make reservoir changes so easy because the last system was not so easy. Okay, so I'm switching from the cheap cable and pump. It works fine, it's just 45 watts. Um, and watts is important in this scenario because we need as low wattage as possible. This is the uh, AP750LV, 18 watts. So this is gonna help us keep the power consumption low. So we can drop this into our system. Doesn't fit. Okay, here we go. So this is gonna allow us to change the flow rate as well as to have our six port manifold on a quick connect so we can easily disconnect it to do reservoir changes. And then I can run my four millimeter tubing from that six port manifold. Okay, so it's all plumbed up. Now I'm gonna fill up the reservoir. This is where the changes I've made come in super handy. So we just disconnect the clip quick connect. You would unplug your pump, slide out the reservoir. Look at that. While that's filling, I'm gonna get the battery bank. Oh. Let me talk to you quickly about it. So this is the AC300 paired with the B300 battery. This whole system is essentially designed as a home battery backup system with the AC300 being able to be paired with up to four B300 battery units at 3072 watt hours per pack. And pairing this with the Bluetti Smart Home Panel, you can tie the AC300 power system directly into your home grid. The AC300 is a 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter, enables 5400 watt fast charging, which is part of the five ways that you can charge using wall outlets, solar panels, 12 volt car systems, gas generators, and lead acid batteries as well. The connection points for discharging the battery are the AC outlets, the four USB-A points, and one USB-C power delivery 3.0, a 12 volt 30 amp, and a 24 volt 10 amp cigarette lighter port. There are also two wireless fast charge pads on top of the unit. This is all controlled via an app, which is paired to the device 
and it can also be controlled by a touch screen LCD display on the front of the unit. Today I'll also be using the Bluetti PV350, which is a 350 watt monocrystalline silicon solar array, which connects to our AC300 with a standard MC4 connector. So I'll leave a link in the description to where you can get this backup battery system. And in the interest of clarity, Bluetti had supplied me this unit for free so that I would make a video and give them some marketing exposure. Plug our cord in, turn it on. So to test the pump, plug it in. Okay, so this should be interesting. I'll turn this on. It should start pumping into our channels and then we'll see water come out here. So we'll turn the AC on. There we go. And you can see here our water returning. Yep, the top ones are working. Just. Okay, so there's definitely the possibility that I'll need to change the pump. I'll let you know if I do that. It's going well. It's just might be a little bit underpowered. So it's now time for the lights. And again, for the lights, I'll be using the Spider Pharma SF600s. Connect those up. Okay, I'm gonna be powering the lights with a multi-adapter. Plug that into the front. So all of our lights are set up and ready to go. Plug the lights in. Three. All right, we have a wattage of and this might be a problem. A load of 374 watts. So here I have the Bluetti PV350, which is the 350 watt solar panel that goes with this device. It is an optional extra, and we're gonna be using this to charge the battery to provide the energy to the pump and the lights. That's a big array. <laughs> this is definitely going to be a learning curve for me because I'm not an electrician. I've set up the photovoltaics, the solar panels, and we are getting <laughs> 62 watts. It's a cloudy day outside, I'll show you. Yep, nothing there. This is the solar array. They are really nice panels actually, but I am interested to see if they put out 350 watts once uh, we have full sun. If not, it actually allows multiple solar arrays to be connected up. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to run it in surplus during the day and I'll have the lights on during the day as well. So they will be drawing from the solar. So I'll probably run the lights for about 12 hours and hopefully I'll get eight hours of sun per day. However, these lights are drawing more than I expected. I'm not sure why. Uh, I think it's because they've got a higher power factor. They are drawing about 375 between them and they're meant to be 60 watt lights. I can actually tell you how much a single light draws. The light is drawing 136 watts and it's a 60 watt light. It's saying 65 watts. This isn't broken. 65 watts, I have read that these lights have a high power factor, which means that the reading that they give is not the actual power draw once it goes through the whole system. So they may actually be 137 watt lights. Please don't ask me what power factor is. I have tried to understand it. If you do, leave a comment below because I'd love to have it explained like I'm five. So we're actually just gonna run the one light today and I'm going to turn off the bottom two channels. We're gonna plant out the top channel. But what I wanna do is I wanna get the system running with one lot of plants first and make sure that it can handle a single light. Can, then I can add in another channel if I see that it's in surplus, we can go from there. We can go from five to five and it's 12 hours. And I'm also going to turn off the other channels. The watt draw for the pump and one light is 139 watts. We're gonna start with that, see how we go getting through the first couple days and I've got 92% in the battery. Okay, so I'm just gonna add in my hydroponic nutrient. This is the stock solution that I made up in my stock solution video. Uh, I'm just adding in 
100 mil of calcium and 100 mil of the other elements, the diamond spec T, because it's four mils per liter, but I'm mixing it at half strength because lettuce. Pre-adjust the pH, and then we can add in our nutrients, like so. Done. Wow, that pH is high. pH is, oh, it's too high. MS is one. Why is that pH so high? I'm gonna add in some more nutrient to bring it down. All right, I'm pretty much doubling the strength here, which is, um, it is what it is. Uh, that's kind of better. Yeah, 6.5, that'll do. And the millisiemens is 2.25. Now we can add in our lettuce. Okay, so we're on the top level. The water's running, and this is the cotton wool technique. I'll show you what the seedlings look like. It's actually um, quite annoying because these are all year round lettuce. They're germinating, but they're just not germinating as nicely as all of, these are cos lettuce. These are red oak leaf, and you can even see the red starting to come through. Um, and I've been doubling down on the cotton wool, as you can see here. You can see the water at the bottom there. I know that the cos are gonna get large. So they're gonna go at the back and the oak leaves can go at the front because they're not gonna be as large. So we've got some really nice seedlings here. Uh, and we can just drop those directly in like that. Okay, so that is all of our seedlings planted. I'm going to leave it as is, and we can see how our system is handling the power requirements. I'm very interested to see, it will depend on the weather as well. I'm gonna put these guys back in the propagation area and set up the time-lapse camera, which will also be running off our battery system. So this is five volts, one amp. I don't even know why I'm plugging in an AC adapter when I can just plug it into the USB, which means I actually have to turn DC on. Hmm. Okay, so just so that you know that the irony is not lost on me, I'm gonna take you on a walkthrough of the system. So here we have solar panels, which are being charged by the power of the sun, free energy, which is being channeled through these cables and back past the dogs into our off-grid battery storage bank, which is the Blue Eddy AC300 and B300. That power in turn is running our pump, which is pumping water up to the plants, which are being lit by this Spider Farmer SF600, which is powered by our backup battery system. We are growing plants with free energy. This has to be the height of the channel. This has to be my magnum opus. <laughs> <laughs> how ridiculous. And now we can see how they grow. So this is actually bloody hilarious. Um, I was right in the middle of cooking dinner. Uh, I made myself some, some snacks and some deep fried chips. But uh, what happened is we've got a thunderstorm going on and you can see there's no house lights on around me. Well, not that there's really that many houses, but there's one over there. Uh, the system was running. I'm uh, down to like 39% because I've been having some problems with the amount of solar that's going in. I'm using it to power the house right now because um, I just have the light circuit on at the moment. I'll turn the TV circuit on soon and I'll just run from my phone. But uh, you can see here, actually I can turn the light on out here. And you can see on the side here, there we go. Um, I've got an auxiliary power point and it's running the uh, lead that goes into the house to the Blue Eddy. And so I have to change the auxiliary switch over um, so that this works, but first I disconnect the solar, turn all of my circuits off that I don't want running. I flick the change over, which activates this as long as your auxiliary switch is turned on. Um, and then I turn the lights on. That will allow me to run whatever circuit I want. So I turn the light on and I've got all these lights will be taking a heap at the moment. So I'm going to turn them off and I've got just the, the lights that I need on in the house at the moment. You can see here, there's no this is the grid. There's no grid. 
I'll just wait for it to come back on, I guess. I'll see the neighbor's lights come back on anyway. Uh, before, before I turn those lights off, I'll show you what it's drawing. Uh, what have we got? Uh, 283 watts. Wow, those neon lights use a lot. So, LED lights on the inside. Uh, I've only got two, they're kind of like oyster lights. Uh, and they draw 72 watts. So, it's just useful actually. But it's definitely going to um, affect, <sighs> affect it. Protected power CC. There we go. So you can see there, the lights come on on the desk. 142, that's only 70 watts. So if I turn that light off, fixed wireless and router has come on. TV is on standby. 125 watts, that's not too bad. So TV is on. 225 watts. That'll do a kilowatt of power every four hours. I can do a few hours of TV. I've got to say, um, that's pretty cool. I mean, I already had that generator point installed in my house. I actually don't own a generator. I don't know why. I really do need to get one. I thought that in the next flood season, I'll just pick one up, but I don't think I need a generator. If I can keep my light wattage low, I don't know why I've got the outside lights on right now. If I can keep my light usage to just the indoor LED lights and charging electronics, and the electronics can all charge off the battery, I can probably get through a whole night without even putting a dent in that battery um, and then have it charged the next day with solar, even if it's a cloudy day. Those 600s, they're draining the battery too fast. So we're gonna have to change those lights, I think. I can get through probably a few nights on that battery, but I wouldn't have all of the lights on at once, obviously. And depending on what I'm using, if you have, even if you have a couple of cloudy days, I think you'll get through. You just don't use your appliances like you would normally use them. Like I'm not gonna go and use the dishwasher right now or boil a kettle. That's what I've got gas mate stoves for. I can cook on a gas mate stove, but I can't charge my phone on a gas mate stove. This would get me through a whole flooding and floodings happen here um, as we've seen. So I'm pretty happy with it. I will say, in an actual practical scenario that I need it, it's there. This is pretty cool. Okay, so the problem I'm having is that the light is taking more power than I thought that it would draw. 133 watts um, when I thought it was a 60 watt light. So I'm actually gonna change the light to these. These are, uh, they're meant to be 24 watt lights, but I think they'll end up being about 30 something watt. The Monios, T8 LED grow light. I just charged the battery uh, because it's slowly been draining. You can see the AC load is 132 watts with uh, this light running. So I've actually lowered the amount of light these guys are getting from 12 to seven and a half hours so that it's more like the actual sun hitting the solar panel, which means that the light is only on while the solar panel is regenerating. The problem is the cloudy days. So the cloudy days are generating less than the light is putting out, which means that it goes into a negative. The 130 is not that bad because it's generating like 300. So it can make it up, but then if you have like two cloudy days in a row, you start to really get into the negative. I'm gonna put these on, they're gonna reduce the amount of power that I'm using by half. There it is. Okay, now I can plug it in. Okay, so we don't have as much coverage. I think the main th problem we're gonna have here, and you've already, you're already seeing it, these plants on the end, they're a bit less vigorous because they didn't have as much light from, even from the last fixture I had. I'm hoping that these lights are gonna be adequate. And what I might do is I'm actually gonna come through, I'm gonna thin out some of these plants. It's just too crowded at the moment. I'll give you a quick look before I do. So you can see the flashing on the camera is because of the LEDs. It's the frame rate not lining up with the LEDs. I say that's because I'm using PAL and these are an American fixture, so they'd be on a different Hertz or frame rate. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna come along and take out any doubles so I can just have this for lunch. And we're getting some really nice edible lettuce. 
So rather than what I'm doing, I'm coming along and taking the smallest lettuces. I would actually recommend taking the larger lettuces and then letting the smaller ones come through and mature. But I wanna get this system growing to a point where it looks nice and full. And there is a really nice salad mix. So it's at this point where I would actually plant out the second row. So uh, if you wanted to start rotating your lettuce, I think it's been about two weeks, you would start planting your second row. And then by the time the third row is done, the top row is ready for harvest. And the watt draw is 59 watts here, as you can see. And the photovoltaic, because it's cloudy at the moment, is 80 watts. So at least we're in a net positive situation here. And this is the result. Uh, there's a few problems with this grow and that's because of the adjustments I had to make for a few reasons. You can see that the lettuce is leggy. It is to do with the lights I exchanged for, but it's also got to do with the light cycle. So the lights are less powerful, but I think they'd actually achieve a decent result if you ran them long enough through the day. And I had to pull these back to about six hours, which would have been fine with the more powerful light. Maybe six to eight hours would have been fine. Even only running them six hours a day, the 300 watt solar, which is actually the bottleneck in the whole system, wasn't enough because some days were like today, cloudy, and some days were sunny. The sunny days were fine. I was running a positive number because of, well, I've got trees that shade my yard and also I couldn't rely on the sun. This system would actually be fine to run if you had enough solar panels. But I didn't really want to add more solar panels on because they weren't, you know, supplied to me with the system. It's a 3072 watt hour battery. You could theoretically run 500 watts worth of lights for six hours, but you've also got to run that pump all the time overnight. If you wanted to create a system like this, I would recommend probably not using a pumped system, use a wicking system. If you're gonna be using lights, you really need to do the math beforehand, see what you can actually achieve with your solar panels. Because this battery pack, you need to make sure that it is getting fully recharged every day. So you'll need enough solar panels to not only recharge the battery while the light's running. And if you run the light while you've got solar energy, you can extend that out either side of the battery's capacity. If you have enough solar, you could run whatever you like because it is a very large battery pack. But with limited solar, that's where your bottleneck's gonna be. And that is the problem here. The legginess is caused by the lack of light and the small lighting period that I had it on. And I actually had to recharge the battery a couple of times throughout the grow. The solar wasn't keeping up with, even with these smaller lights. So that's my advice. You will definitely need more solar panels. <laughs> I think the biggest takeaway that I have from using this device, it is super useful in a blackout. I mean, it is what its main purpose is. It's it's a generator replacement. If you buy a generator, you'll be putting like two, $3,000 for a good generator. And then you'll also have to run the generator with fuel. This just eliminates the need for having fuel because you can generate your own power from the sun for a certain subset of people, people that don't like messing around with electrical stuff. You can literally just plug it into your house and play. It has everything there, it's, it's, it's foolproof. It's a really good device. I know that it's well built because this, this is the device that Blue Eddie sent out to me years ago. And as you can see, I've put it through the absolute ringer and it has been nothing but reliable. And I've really enjoyed having it. When it comes to off-grid hydroponics, unless you've got no choice but to run a hydroponic system this way. You can run the lights indoors while it's sunny outside with, without draining your battery capacity. Then your battery capacity just gives you the extra on each side that you need. You just you're gonna need a lot of solar panels. So just a quick disclaimer so that I don't get absolutely overrun by contrarians on the internet. 
Do I think you should do this? Probably not. The amount of light wattage that we're dealing with and the cost of all the equipment, definitely prohibitive. Was it an awesome little experiment that we got to enjoy because Blue Eddie's marketing department was kind enough to fund one of my harebrained schemes? Yes. So thank you to Blue Eddie for sending out the device for us to have fun with. If you are looking to grow plants off grid, I would recommend utilizing solar power in its raw form. <laughs> Links in the description to where you can find the Blue Eddie AC300 and B300 batteries. Happy hydroponicking and I will see you next time on Who Chose. <laughs>